How is everything? Good. Good. Yeah. That's a typical Philadelphiaism. It's like you leave the Wawa, they say, have a good one. <laughs> People around here say, how is everything? My response to that, and this has been for decades, is I'm not responsible for everything. <laughs> My stuff's going okay. <clears throat> And, the, and I get a laugh out of that when I say it, but how is everything? It's like, it's not my job. Everything is not my job. My stuff is going okay. The stuff that I'm responsible for, the stuff that I'm in charge of is okay. <clears throat> but I don't need to be in control of everything. I don't need to be in charge of everything. Not everything is going to be my job. Now the reason that we ask that question and the reason that we answer that question is because we have this innate desire to have things be okay or to be making things better. So many of us, when we see a problem or a challenge or an opportunity out in the world around us, we want to help, we want to make it better. We want to lend a hand and contribute and bring something new into the experience. And that's wonderful. And there are some times when that's completely appropriate and it works really well. And there's a saying that they have in the government. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> and sometimes it comes off sounding cynical. It's like, well, I'm not going to get involved. That's above my pay grade. It's like an excuse to get out of things. But in reality, there's some stuff that's above my pay grade. There's some stuff that I'm not responsible for. There's stuff that's beyond my area of control or expertise. And the challenge is understanding which is which. What is my job? I mean, I'm, the talk is called Not My Job, <clears throat> which is you know, a segment on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, which I a show that I just love. And <clears throat> it's got you know, a, a little bit of cynica, cynicism to it, which is fun. So there's some stuff that's not my job. But there's some stuff that is my job. There's stuff that, that is my business. And a bunch of other phrases. None of your business. Mind your own business. Stay out of my business. Okay. What is your business? What is other people's business? I started a, uh, uh, an office job on Monday. <clears throat> and it's on a contract. I'm a consultant with this company for the next six months. And I love consulting. I've been doing consulting work for 20 years. And the wonderful thing about consulting work is I get to go in being relatively ignorant about something, watch, pay attention, listen for a little while, and then give my opinion. If these people knew me, they'd realize that all they need to do is have me show up. They're going to get that for free. I can't resist sharing my opinion. <laughs> Fortunately, I've been able to turn that into a job of consulting. And there are a couple of categories where minding somebody else's business is important. Consulting is one of them. Auditors, they mind other people's business and that's their job. Seventh graders, no. No, they mind other people's business, but it's not their job. They just do it. And you've seen what happens when the, the cattiness starts and they're sticking their nose into other people's business so they can be critical or judgmental or have an opinion about something that's not theirs. It's not their job. And how many times have we heard that just leading to something wonderful and delightful? And how many times have we heard of that leading to woe and misery and disappointment and angst and tears and all the rest of that? And it's about doing what's appropriate. And it's about engaging in the rest of the world in a way that's going to be appropriate. It was a long time ago. I was working for a company and sitting around chatting towards the end of the day with the people who were working in the department that I was in charge of. And one of the girls kind of blurted out, Jennifer, she said, you know everything. How do you know everything? I just, somebody that had asked something and I knew it and I said so. She said, why is it that you know everything? And I said, well, I don't think I know everything. She says, you do. I said, well, less than two minutes ago in this conversation, didn't you ask me about, and I pointed out something that she had mentioned or somebody else had mentioned. And she says, yeah. I said, well, you remember what I said? She says, yeah, you said you had no idea. <laughs> and then she stops herself and she says, why do I think you know everything? <laughs> and that was a pivotal moment for me. 
It was a wonderful moment for me, and it's actually what made the consulting career possible, because I discovered right then that I don't know is an answer. I was willing to stand there and say, and claim my own ignorance, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm completely out of my league. This is above my pay grade. It's none of my business. I don't know. And it turns out, that's a good answer. That's not my job is an acceptable answer. And the reason she was impressed, probably, is because so many people, when they don't know the answer, what do they do? They make it up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> they, it's true. They, they say, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I got me a big shovel and I'm gonna <laughs> keep some of this on you until it seems like it's looking better. <laughs> so, I don't know can be a perfectly good answer. And the magical thing that happens when we say, I don't know, is that we're opening the door for some new insight, for some new information, for some new knowledge. And that's the really powerful part about saying, I don't know. It's above my pay grade. That might be a way of saying, I don't know, I'm not going to find out because somebody else is in charge of that. Sometimes that's going to be appropriate. Sometimes, though, what you want to do is say, I do not yet have all of the information, all of the insight, all of the knowledge, all of the background to be present with an answer, with an understanding, with a solution to this. So sometimes it's an invitation, and that's wonderful. That's called evolution. That's the, that's the way that we're invited to, to start where we are or to continue where we've gotten to, to the next step and to the next step and to the next step. So we all have opinions. Everybody here, I'm sure, has an opinion on something, yes? Okay. And in certain circumstances, completely willing to share them. That's okay. Everybody has an opinion. There's a great joke about that. Not going to do it here. <laughs> Everybody has an opinion. You have an opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. And please remember this, and I say this with all love and all respect. Just because it's yours doesn't mean that it's right. It is possible that what you think, what I think, what somebody down the road thinks, what somebody in a political convention that's going on somewhere else in the country thinks, is not correct. It's possible that we have an opinion and it's not right. It's not accurate. It's not true in some sort of a larger sense. And that's okay too. The part where it gets fun is where the opinions and personalities intersect. So here are these people with this opinion and here are these people with that opinion and then they get together and there is an interaction. Reverend Dave and I have been having some conversations about uh, our families. And we've kind of categorized that in some relationships, the, uh, the personality interaction is thermal. Somebody says something, and somebody else gets a little cold. <laughs> somebody does something, people get a little warmer. So it's a very gradual sort of shift. Sometimes it's geological. The shifts just are really, really slow. <laughs> it's like tectonic plates moving against each other. Of course, eventually there's an earthquake or something. <laughs> my, family, <clears throat> my, my family tends to be chemical in its nature. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a you know, the, the, the pH balance turns a little this way or that way and it, uh, you know, the, it gets blue or red or whatever it happens to be. Sometimes it's like dropping a mento in with Diet Coke. <laughs> Instantaneous explosion. Some people are nuclear. You get two of these ideas together, it becomes a critical mass, and everything explodes. And sometimes it's a dud. Sometimes there's such apathy going on that nobody cares. I have an opinion, but I'm not actually willing to, to, to take a stand for it or say anything about it. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other. All of them serve their purposes, and all of them are just wonderful to chat about if you need to. But understanding how the reactions, how the interactions, how the personalities are intersecting is wonderfully valuable in understanding where we are in those experiences. Because when we get into a relationship with somebody and we have this difference of opinion, we get to choose. We get to choose our part. We don't get to choose how the whole thing is going to go together. We get to, to decide how it is that we want to bring ourselves to it. How we want to move through that disagreement. We can do it like a trial <clears throat> or an explosion. You know, the, the interrogation, the defense rests, somebody with a gavel and a judge pointing fingers and stuff like that. And of course, if it's me, I hope that the other guy is going to wind up in jail. 
<laughs> Those don't always work. Sometimes it's an exploration. Wow, here's this difference of opinion. Let's go together and explore what this is about. So I can find out more about you. That's, a, that's curiosity. I can find out what's going on for you. You can find out what's going on for me. We can see if there's some common ground for us to meet on or understand that, wow, these are they're two completely different perspectives on the same thing. It can be a ballet, which is wonderful as you dance together through whatever the, the situation is. That takes a rehearsal, though. Because the worst thing that happens in a ballet is if the ballerina thinks that the guy's going to catch her and the guy is a measure behind, <laughs> and she's boom, and he's whoops. <laughs> so it takes some coordination. The interactive way that that works is martial arts, which is a lot of times done as a fight or a battle. But it's one person moving and the other person moving, and it's reacting and responding and being present. In slow motion, that's a chess game. So what is it that we're going to bring to somebody, to, to our relationship and our engagement with somebody else? So you can probably think of times in your life where you've engaged with different people in different ways. And you probably know whether you're the sort of person who tends to go ballistic <clears throat> or tends to close down. And it's not like one is better than the other, but if you tend to do one in a particular circumstance, it's really good to know that. Because then when you're in a situation and it starts to happen, we can recognize it and then decide, is that what I want to do or is that, do I want to be doing something different? And martial arts actually didn't really go in there because it can seem like a fight. And the really important thing to remember, it is impossible to win a war with somebody you love. It's impossible to win a war with somebody you love. And the reason is because along the way, somebody gets turned into a loser. And then you're in a relationship with somebody who you've defined as a loser. So, and there's so many times that I've gotten into that situation. You know, there's a difference of opinion. We're at that intersection. It's like, we're going to keep on escalating and escalating. Something's got to change. Because otherwise, it's not going to end in a happy way. So do you need to be right? No. Do you like to be right? Let's admit it. I can own that. I like to be right. <laughs> Every now and then. Every now and again, it's nice to be right. Do you need to have all the answers? No. It's nice to have the answers, but it's OK to not have the answers. Do you have to swing at every pitch? No. Sometimes it's a bad pitch. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right for you. Because you know what? If the batter is standing in the batter's box and the pitch comes in and you don't swing at it, it might be a ball, might be a strike. If it comes right down the middle and you swing at it and you miss, it's still a strike. It doesn't matter where the pitch was. If it's not going to connect, if you're not feeling good about it, it might just not be the right one for you. So we get to choose which ones we're going to engage with. Some of them you let go by. If you let all of them go by, that kind of says a little bit more about you. If you have to hit every last one of them, that says something about you, too. And it's OK, but it's nice to recognize which one is which. And all of those things are about understanding what's not my job. It's not my job to be right all the time. It's not my job to have all the answers all the time, even when I've been hired as a consultant because somebody wants me to have the answers. Not my job. In that case, my job is to recognize that there are questions and set out on the expedition to find the answers. But I don't have to have them. It's not my job to swing at every pitch. And it's not your job either. So what is your job? I mean, if I were to say to you, before I started this talk, if I said, what's your job? You probably would have thought of your day job, your 9 to 5, whatever it is that you do to earn money and put bread on the table. Dave's shaking his head because he's been oh. through some classes. <laughs> <laughs> Something else? No, that has come up in my mind. Like, what is my job here? Yeah. Like, overall. Yeah. Mission, so to speak. Yeah. And that's an interesting question. When somebody says, what's your job? Do you start talking about your day job? Or you're on somebody else's payroll? Do you talk about your family obligations? And stuff that you have to do to live your life? With your family of origin, with your chosen family, with your extended family? Do you talk about your personal commitments? 
I have to be at this meeting, I'm helping these people, I'm working with that particular organization, I've decided to do that. Is that your job? And all those are jobs. All those are important. And it's wonderful that people are doing those things, because otherwise we would all just sort of be sitting there lonely with no events on the calendar. But your job really is what Don Miguel Ruiz calls the fourth agreement. So always do your best. Whatever it is that you're doing, the what doesn't make nearly as much difference as how you bring yourself to it. Your work in the world might be the job that you have. Your work in the world might be the way that you're engaging with people as you're walking down the street. Your work in the world might be the volunteer duties that you're taking on. There are so many stories that I've heard about so many, many different people who hear back years or months later from someone who said, you know, that thing that you said really changed my life. If you ever had one of those happen? Somebody comes back to you and said, you know, I've been thinking about something that you said. A lot, a lot of times you might have forgotten it. Sometimes that's happened to me and they said, you told me this and it was really profound and it changed my life. And I think to myself, sounds like the sort of thing that I would have said. So. I'll go along with it. Might have been me, might not have been me. Might have been God channeling itself through me. Doesn't really make any difference. But that is our work in the world. That's our job, is to be completely present in the moment, to share ourselves in whatever way seems to be appropriate at the time. Your job, my job, our job, each, of, each and every one of us, is to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Can you do that? Can you be the best version of yourself that you could possibly be? Can you share your gifts? Because you have them. Everybody has gifts. Seven plus billion people on the planet, all connected because we are part of that same infinite source, that same love energy, but all different. I mean, every, every last one of us has different features and personality. So we're all different. We all bring that special combination of gifts together differently. But we all have them. So we all have our gifts. So we're here to share our gifts. We're here to shine our light. And it's not our light, it's God's light as us. And we get to do that in whatever way is going to bring more good and more joy and more happiness into our lives, the lives of the people who are around us, the lives of the people who are around them. We get to choose how that's going to happen. Sometimes we don't know what it's going to be. If we think we know what it's going to be, sometimes it's really good to get quiet and say, is that really it? Is, there, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Or is there something else that I could be doing? And to allow the time and the space and the quiet for that still small voice to make a suggestion to us. Yep, this is, what, this is, this is what's mine to do, and this is what I'm to be doing next, and next, and next, and next, and be able to follow those steps. Because that's one of those cases where I don't know can be so wonderfully important. Because when I think I know what I'm supposed to be doing, I might not know what I'm supposed to be doing. But when I get that into my personality, into my ego, I'm going to be running down that path full steam until something happens to convince me that perhaps there's a different path. So one of the things that, uh, that came to mind this week as I was starting this, this new job, there's a lot of 20-somethings. Who, uh, who work in this new organization. <clears throat> and we're involved in a lot of transformation. And there's another consultant there who's really good at helping organizations do processes. They're going through transformation. And we, he and I were talking a little bit. And I've been involved in the demise of several industries. I was a morning show air personality on an AM radio station. Okay? We don't have those anymore. I worked for a company that did typesetting. I've worked for other companies in the printing industry. The entire section of the industry is gone. I've done direct response marketing or direct mail marketing, sending out tens of thousands of or millions of catalogs. It doesn't happen so much anymore. <laughs> and for as long as I wanted to stay on any one of those paths, eventually it would have led to a stopping point, either into a wall or off of a cliff. And it's the ability to say, to be quiet and say, all right, I still have these same gifts and talents and skills and abilities. How are they going to get used next that winds up being the gift? So if we let go of those assumptions, another one of the agreements that Don Miguel Ruiz has, we have the opportunity to bring our best selves to it. 
So your job, to be the best version of yourself you can possibly be. To bring yourself fully into the opportunities and into the situation. To share your gifts, to shine your light, and to allow yourself today to be even just a tiny bit better than you were yesterday. To allow the space for your experience, for yourself and what you're bringing to it, to be a little tiny bit better. Because the world deserves all that you are. The light that's shining is you. And I am so grateful for the way that you share your gifts. Namaste.